I would like to explain evolutionarily stable and unstable Nash equilibrium. And the context here is going to be a situation where you have a game with a mixed strategies solution to it. So the optimal solution here is on average, you sort of mix back and forth between two different strategies. But that game is going to be embedded into an evolutionary context where the population could evolve in one direction or another direction depending on the Nash equilibrium and the random variation away from that Nash equilibrium. That's going to be the setup. Now, I'm not going to explain how to solve mixed strategies Nash equilibrium in this video, but I will post another video where I'm solving this exact game for to come up with the mixed strategies Nash equilibrium. And of course, this is going to be where the mix is P percentage of the population will be Hawks, or, or P percent will have the hawk strategy, 1 minus P percent of the population will have the Dove strategy, and the solution here is P equals 3 quarters, 3 quarters of the population is Hawks, 3 quarters of the population is Dove. And the style of this particular game is a game of chicken. I have a video explaining some of the classic game styles. But let me give an actual evolutionary context for us to think about this problem within. And I'm going to imagine gerbil populations, where the question is, you have gerbil personality types or gerbil instincts. And some gerbils may have a more hawkish personality type, and that hawkish, hawkish in the context of game theory usually means aggressive, um, they're going to fight, they're going to try to dominate in some way. And dove means it's a peaceful personality type. If they encounter a hawk, they will uh, stand back and let the hawk do its thing or whatnot. So these are essentially two personality types of animals in a species. And in an evolutionary environment, what that means is that the payoffs in this table are going to translate in some way to children or grandchildren or to the way the system evolves. And the question is, if the hawk strategy is more successful, the population will evolve toward having more hawks in the population. And same is true of the dove strategy. So the question is, can you have a population that has a stable share of the population as hawks versus doves, or will the population tend toward one or the other end of this spectrum? And this spectrum is how we're going to look at this problem. So here we have P equals 0% of the population is hawks. In other words, 100% doves here, up to 100% hawks, P equals 100%. Uh, and there's no doves, and we place our Nash equilibrium at 75% because we've already solved for that mixed strategies Nash equilibrium. Now what does it mean for this to be a mixed strategies Nash equilibrium? Well, it means if exactly 75% of the population is hawks, 25% is doves, then there's no advantage to being a hawk, no advantage to being a dove. Like any one animal is indifferent between those two strategies. They both have, on average, the same number of children and grandchildren into the future. So if you're always exactly at that 75%, you're never going to move in either direction. The problem is that evolution has this random element. So maybe one year, based on the litters of babies that these gerbils have, instead of being at 75%, you're at 70% or 72%, or maybe when you're, you're at 80%, or you're at 79%. So because evolution will sort of bounce the population a little bit around the 75%, the question is, if you find yourself somewhere on this side of it, does that give an advantage to the hawks or the doves? And if it does, such that the hawks have more babies than the doves, or vice versa, then that's going to move the population in one direction or the other. And you can probably see where this is going. A stable Nash equilibrium means if you bump a little bit away from that Nash equilibrium, you're going to naturally tend back toward it. So if you bump a little bit up to 80%, um, naturally the population will move back to 75%. That's going to be a stable Nash equilibrium because it means it doesn't matter that the random variation puts you on one side or the other. Naturally, it, it will always tend back to that equilibrium. But another possibility is this could be an unstable Nash equilibrium. 
And if that happens, if you randomly move to 70%, then that means there's going to be an advantage, in this case, to being a dove where you get more and more doves in the population, meaning fewer and fewer hawks, and you're going to have that movement all the way down to where hawks are extinct in the population. And the same thing if you accidentally move to this side for an unstable Nash equilibrium, which we haven't figured out yet whether this particular game is stable or unstable. But if you move a little bit to this side, then the population will randomly, or will naturally tend toward 100%. So the way I've depicted this um, visually is an unstable Nash equilibrium, meaning you can only sustain the 75% of the population being hawks if every generation exactly 75% stays hawks. So it's unstable because as soon as you get random variation away, um, you're going to move to one extreme or the other. So that's stable and unstable. Now our next question is, is this particular game stable or unstable? And the way to figure this out is going to be to say, well, what if you randomly found yourself anywhere over here? And I'm just going to put us at 50% because that's um, the math of that is going to be easy. So if we randomly find ourselves at 50%, will the hawks have an advantage or will the doves have an advantage? And if the hawks have an advantage, that means we're at 50%, but we're going to naturally tend toward increasing the hawk population. If the doves have an advantage at 50% hawks, then uh, we're going to have fewer and fewer hawks and it goes in that direction. So how do we figure out who has the advantage here? And we simply do the math saying, okay, if my strategy is hawk and 50% of the population is hawks, what is my payoff? So the payoff to player one from cho choosing a hawk strategy, and of course I use the word choosing, obviously these animals don't choose their, their instincts or their personality types, but uh, it works the same if you do it that way. So the payoff to player one of choosing hawk is going to be the probability that you encounter another hawk in some sort of fight or non-fight is going to be one half, because that's the scenario we're setting up, p equals one half. And the payoff to the hawk, if that happens, is negative one, plus the probability of encountering a dove, which is one minus p, which is also one half in our one half scenario. And you multiply that by the payoff if we encounter a dove and we have chosen hawk, and that's a payoff of four, and that payoff is three halves. So let's check the payoff to player one of choosing dove, and that's going to be equal to, if we're choosing dove, uh, our payoff is the probability of encountering a hawk, which th that's 50%, with one half, times the payoff to us who chose dove of that, which is zero, plus the probability of encountering another dove, which is one half, times the payoff to us if we encounter another dove, which is one. So the payoff here is going to be one half. So we can see the hawk strategy actually has advantages in this situation. That means if we have half the population as hawks, hawks will have an advantage and they'll have more babies. So the next generation is going to have more hawks. So we're going to tend toward more and more hawks and that will move up. Now, we're also going to check what's happening up here. Like, what if we have 90% of the population as hawks? Who has the advantage then? So let me repeat this exercise, except instead of p equals one half, it's going to be p equals 90%. In which case, the payoff of choosing hawk is going to be equal to 90% of the population is hawks, 0 0.9. The payoff from choosing hawk is negative 1 plus 10% of the population at this point would be doves. The payoff if you've chosen hawk from encountering a dove is four. So that payoff is negative one half. Let's check the payoff from choosing dove when 90% of the population is hawks. And in which case, if we choose dove, our payoff is 90% of the population is hawks. If we encounter a hawk, our payoff is zero. 10% of the population is doves. If we choose dove, our payoff is one. So the payoff for a dove strategy here is 0 0.1, which is higher than the payoff from a hawk, which is negative one half. In which case, if we're up here at 90%, we're going to get more and more doves, fewer and fewer hawks, 
fewer hawks is going to be moving us on this in this direction. So we're going to be moving back toward this, and therefore this is going to be a stable Nash equilibrium.